and we're live. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this regular community team Q and A uh, from those of us in the community team. <laughs> Need to find a better way to say that. Uh, uh, so this week we've got uh, a few people to answer your questions. Uh, so uh, you can ask your questions in IRC. Uh, the IRC channel is hash Ubuntu dash on dash air on Freenode. Uh, alternatively, if you just go to Ubuntu on Air, all one word, UbuntuOnAir.com, there's a, a little chat box underneath that. You can log in there and uh, give us your questions. If you prefix the question with the word question, then we will see it more easily. It will highlight for us, so that'll make things a lot easier. Uh, and we'll get to your questions in in just a bit. Uh, with me, I've got uh, Michael Hall, uh, who's in London with it looks like half of Will Cook on the screen. <laughs> There's the other half. <laughs> Hello, chaps. And we've also got Michael Zanetti. Hello, Michael. Hello. So uh, we wanted to uh, get a few people on. Uh, it worked quite well last week when we talked about Snappy uh, um, with the guys who were over in Texas at the time, I think. Um, so this week we've got um, Michael, who's at a desktop sprint in London uh, with Will and a bunch of other people off stage to his left. Okay. Um, and did we freeze or did Alex? Uh, yeah, I can hear you, Mike. It's fine. All right. Sorry, hotel what? <laughs> uh, and uh, Michael, who works uh, primarily on Unity, but also has a whole bunch of uh, apps in the store. So you know, if you've uh, if you've installed any apps on an Ubuntu phone, probably one of them is almost certainly Michael's, um, because he's made loads of them. <laughs> um, so there's one other um, announcement we need to make uh, before we start, and that is that the Ubuntu Online Summit starts on May the 5th uh, and runs till May the 7th. Uh, you can get all the details of the Ubuntu Online Summit at summit.ubuntu.com. Uh, and we're filling the schedule with sessions, uh, which is uh, how we start planning the, uh, the next release and releases beyond uh, to uh, 1604 and the distant future. Uh, come along and uh, schedule sessions if there's anything particularly you want to talk about. Um, if We've got a new track this time called Show and Tell. Uh, so if you've got something particularly cool or interesting you want to demo, then you know point your webcam at something or screen share or whatever you want to do and uh, demonstrate whatever cool thing you've been working on. Um, it's a good way to promote something, but also get other people uh, involved in your project. Have I missed anything out, Mike? Um, just UOS in general, that we're doing a lot of uh, discussion and planning there. And there, it will be a very similar format to this. It's on summit.ubuntu.com. But uh, they will all have a live stream video that you can watch and uh, an IRC channel that you can ask questions in. You can also join those video hangouts most of the time, too, if you have something to add to the conversation and you don't want to just do it all through IRC. If you're comfortable joining video and you've got a webcam, you can do that. Right. And if you if you if you do have a webcam and you want to join in, you can. But um you know it's not compulsory if you want to like join in and you know turn your webcam off and you know or wear a hat or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know it's not it's not you know compulsory. We don't have to see your face and all that. But um uh, yeah, you can also join in via. Um, the, we use Etherpad to collaboratively document what goes on, uh, and often we actually have silent people sat there listening to the stream or watching the stream, documenting as we go. So you know, stream of consciousness straight from us into Etherpad, and that's super valuable because all the people who are involved in the conversation often uh, miss out the details of uh, when they're documenting it. So it's really useful to have someone during those sessions to uh, to write stuff up. Uh, anything else, Mike? Nope. I think that's all for the updates so far. So before the questions roll in, is I, I do want to uh, uh, <laughs> outline a few things that uh, you, you guys are... Sorry, we're all seeing the questions coming in, so that's what's <laughs> making this up. Um, uh, do you want to outline some of the things that you guys are doing at the desktop sprint? And maybe uh, Michael can talk a little bit then about some of the cool and interesting stuff that's happening in Unity 8 at the moment that maybe people haven't seen. Should we start with you, Mike? Yeah, well, it's Will's team, so I'll let him uh, talk about what's going on. OK. Yeah, so the focus of this week is to get our, our plan together with reference to the Snappy desktop. So uh, as you guys would have heard last week, 
Snappy is a, is a new way of packaging things for apps as well as the, the entire operating system. Um, it will give us, um, when it's uh, in its final form, it will give us much more granularity over what's installed on the image. It will allow us to update applications uh, out of step with the traditional release cycle. So um, yeah, as end users, you'll, you'll benefit from better security. You'll be uh, benefit from more up-to-date applications. Uh, you know, as soon as a developer has pushed out an, uh, an update to your app, then you'll get it on your desktop. And that will be uh, a, a great improvement, in my opinion. Uh, we're also talking about how we continue to keep the Unity 7 traditional sort of dev-based desktop uh, moving forwards, keeping it as up-to-date as we can, uh, and making sure that it doesn't stagnate while we're doing work on the new system. Uh, and also, we've, we've come together to, to work out what we need to ask for community input on and um, putting our plans together for the sessions for the online summit. So I think that's, uh, that's an interesting point that uh, you've mentioned there about uh, Unity 8 and Unity 7 and the fact that they're, you know, both continuing in parallel, both, you know, uh, well, I say Unity 8, I mean the snappy desktop and the traditional dev-based Unity 7 desktop that we know and love at the moment. And there's, you know, some for some time to come that I, you, did, you didn't specify, but uh, I'm imagining some time they're both going to continue to be maintained. Is that right? Yep, that's the plan. Yeah. yeah. In, in a lot of the same way, you know, we continue to have the GNOME 2 session while we were doing Unity. And for a while, GNOME 2 was the default and Unity was the option, and then it flipped. So the same kind of transition. And Mark has um, Mark has spoken in Hangouts and, and that kind of thing uh, recently about not uh, you know not forcing Unity 8 onto people until such time as it is ready for for the mainstream. Uh, I think it's it's fair to say at this point that the user base for the new Unity 8 style of desktop with all the snappy packaging that comes with it is at this point probably slightly different to the traditional. Um, Ubuntu desktop, uh, and so we just need to make sure that all the use cases for, let's call, power users are understood, uh, written down, and we've got a plan on how we're going to achieve all of those things. So when you say the the um, the things that those power users are going to do, I mean, we're talking right from, you know, I want to be able to play music through to, you know, I want to develop Java applications or, you know, I want to install my Oracle database, you know, it's... Yeah, I, 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 by the end of it, you want to be able to fulfill all of those requirements, right? Right. Yeah, and, and yeah, people that like getting under the hood and tinkering with all kinds of crazy stuff that um, that that is an option available. Uh, and then at the other end of the spectrum, then we've got people that use a computer primarily as a web browser, um, and perhaps you know some entertainment, playing movies or music, uh, and that so that all needs to work flawlessly as well. Yeah, it's uh, interesting to me that the. the you know, the, with the idea of having uh, very atomic uh, items in the, the desktop, you could potentially create uh, an Ubuntu core snappy-based desktop with a very light desktop and just a browser on top. And it almost becomes, you know, a Chromebook-like experience, potentially. Um, and I think people yeah, hacking right, yeah. those kind of things might be, might be quite useful for people to hack on um, as time goes yeah. on. Yeah, and using system some images and snappy packages makes that a lot easier to maintain also. And uh, trying to make your own distro with a selection of packages, even if you're just using packages that are already made for you in the distro, just combining them all together and maintaining that over a long period of time is a lot of work. Whereas if you're just pulling in you know, one image file and a dozen snap packages, that makes it quite a bit easier. Awesome. OK, uh, should we flip over to uh, Michael and uh, probe what's happening in the, the Unity 8 uh, world? Anything uh, cool and interesting? We've seen a demos from you, Michael, showing um, things like window mode on the phone. And I know uh, Will did a video demo. Uh, and that, that, that seemed to get people quite fired up and make people understand more about what convergence and what Unity 8 was going to bring. Um, are there any other cool and interesting things you've been uh, been doing that uh, we should know about? Um, yeah, well, on in Unity 8 land, we currently have two main things we we're working on. One of them is to improve the whole scope experience. Um, that's always a strong story. We're going to make it better. And yeah, we, we're going to put quite some effort into that. On the other hand, obviously, there is the, um, the, the whole desktop experience thing. Like, 
uh, at the start, we're probably going to call it Pocket Desktop, where the Unity 8 desktop will be able to do yeah, most of the things that tradi traditional desktop does, but a bit simplified. Um, so yeah, we are currently working on improving input device support. Uh, we're working on allowing applications to have multiple windows, multiple surfaces. And then we're also doing some new um, cool looking artwork, like we're going to have a spread on the desktop too, like similar to the phone or the right edge. Um, yeah, that's basically the, the main things right now. So, so you rattled through a bunch of things there, and I wanted to pick up on a, on a couple of them. Um, <laughs> Uh, one of them was uh, something that you mentioned that um, I know Will kind of uh, alluded to in one of his videos where he had a tablet running Unity 8 and plugged in a mouse and the desktop morphed and uh, applications turned into window mode. Um, I, I, I get asked a, a lot of the time by application developers, how can I tell what mode you know the system is in. Am I am I running on a phone, or am I running on a tablet, or am I running on a thing with a pointing device? Are, are you going to implement some kind of um, system by which the application can know what it's on, so it can react differently, or how how is that going to work? Right. So um, I think the overall target here is to to create a system where the application does not need to know if it is on a phone or a tablet or on a desktop, because there are tons of other devices which we're probably not thinking about and we might want to run in the future. So as an application developer, you should always try to make the application resi um, or, well, deal with the current situation it's in. So most importantly, the screen size you have, for example. So you should not do something like, if I'm on a desktop, then have five columns, and if I'm on a phone, have only one. Instead, you should see how much screen spaces are available, available and adjust your layout according to that. Um, same for mouse versus touchscreen. Um, in the near future, I think most um, laptops and everything will have a touchscreen along with the mouse. So it's not something where you should do it one or the other way. Instead, you should always you make as much use as possible of the available devices or screen space or whatever. Yeah, that's an important point. I mean, right now there's a fairly clear distinction between tablets and laptops, but even that's going away. And we're hoping that once we have, you know, a whole convergent story, that that's going to open up the door to all kinds of new device types that we haven't even thought of yet. So the developer really should be looking more towards what is the specific functionality that I have now and how can I take advantage rather than what kind, what, what category of device would this fall into. This, this reminds me very much of a bug that, uh, that I'm sure many of you are familiar with, where the Evolution uh, email client setup wizard, uh, the, the size of the window is bigger than will fit on any, you know, netbook. And so, you know, it, it, you can't, it, it becomes completely unusable on, on small resolutions. And it, my mind thinks of that when you talk about, you know, uh, a responsive uh, window so that, you know, if, if I am on a, a, a tightly constrained machine that, you know, I don't think many people envisaged netbooks before they, before they came along, um, envisaged that, you know, a, a evolution setup screen would have to be this big to fit on a, on a, a netbook. And, you know, we, we can't envisage what's going to be the, you know, the next device after the phone and the tablet or the watch. Right. The toaster. <laughs> yeah. So uh, okay. for people who are interested in seeing some of the things that Michael was just talking about, we are begging him to uh, run a demo during the Ubuntu Online Summit. Uh, again, that's May 5th through the 7th, so he's hopefully going to come on with some nice uh, videos or live demos to show off all of these neat new features. Awesome. And we should expect that stuff to be landing in uh, phones and tablets and desktops over the course of the next... Yes, yes, you should. <laughs> some of it is definitely going to land in the next cycle, yeah. Right. Awesome. Cool. Uh, should we uh, take a look at some of the, uh, the questions? Um, uh, I'll, I'll go through them uh, because it's probably easier for me to see them than it is for you guys. Uh, first question from Chupa Wapa. Am I too early? No. Uh, the next question uh, is also from Chupa Wapa who says, is it true that Canonical will sponsor a NASCAR car? Hmm. Um, so I think there's a picture uh, somebody put up on 
I think I saw it on Reddit. Yeah. I'll find it right now. Uh, the, a nice little graphic of a, a car with Ubuntu and canonical coloring and decals all over it. Yeah, it looks pretty awesome, and uh, you have to take a couple of looks to realize, actually, it's a 3D rendered uh, model from a game, not actually a real car. Uh, yeah, that would be cool. Um, although, uh, you know, I can imagine uh, many people looking at the car and going, Ubuntu, what's that, John? Yeah, um, it would be fun, but I don't think that's the best use of our money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd rather pay for a few more developers than uh, yeah. you know, paint job on a car. Um, okay, uh, next question. Okay, uh, this is a question for you, Mike and Will, from Going Solo. Why is Mike in Dracula's castle? <laughs> <laughs> so, so where are you, Mike? In London, in the middle of London, uh, in a very old hotel, which is quite nice. I really like the hotel. But yeah, it, it does look a bit like some... <laughs> I know, I know this... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I realize this is your, your first time in London, Mike. Let me just tell you not to set your expectations that every hotel looks like that. <laughs> Some of them I mean, it's not all like it on TV? No, no, no. Okay, next, uh, we've actually got a... Uh, oh, have you found right. it? Yeah, I found it. So, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of pictures there on Reddit. You can go Seriously, find it. On, a, on a phone, you just can't tell that's not a real car. Um, yeah. Okay, so we actually have a serious question. Is there a way to convert debs to clicks or snaps? Hmm. There is a way uh, that Michael Terry is experimenting with to take binary debs and turn them into snaps. Uh, there, there's a lot of work on this. That's one of the big topics that have come up this week that we need to figure out answers for. Uh, and I think there's going to be more discussion of that on uh, UOS next week to try and work out what's possible and how to do it and who's going to do it. And also whether it's really practical to do that, whether it makes sense to, you know, convert a deb into a, into a click or a snap or whether it makes sense, more sense yeah, to there's, build your there's application. Be and then... Really, you can't turn into clicks or snaps just because they have to do things that those packaging formats don't allow. Right. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of discussion left to be had on that. I, and I'm sure people will come up with new and interesting ways to convert existing applications, and they may well be able to hit, you know, a significant percentage of debs in the archive. But I, you know, I suspect there's a significant number of corner cases that, you know, you could probably hit the first seventy percent with a small shell script, but then you know it takes you, as always, a lot longer to do the last thirty percent. Right. Um, another question from La Fromage. Uh, is it possible to run Python on the Ubuntu phone? Yes, it is. In fact, we've got a couple of Python apps in the store already um, using Pi Other Side, which actually gets embedded in their Click app itself. So, um, is it um, Dinko, is it, that did this? Who did the Calculus app? Um, I don't know. But there's, there's also uh, check. Yeah, that's uh, Dinko. Dinko. It was Dinko, was it? Okay. So yeah, there's the calculus app. I didn't realize that was Python. That's awesome. Yeah, that's um, Python. And it's worth it's worth pointing out that while currently there is a Python binary on the phone, like you know, if you just SSH'd into your Ubuntu phone and typed Python, you would get the Python interpreter. Um, there's no guarantee that that will be there. It's not part of the SDK. So you shouldn't expect that Python would be on the phone um, and depend right. on it. So the solution that Dinko took is good because it does bring that in the click package itself so you don't have to rely on it being in the system in a specific place or version. Right. And that's the same for any, any component that you depend on that's not delivered as part of the SDK. It should be packaged up you know, in your in your click. And actually when we were talking to um, the guys last week about Snappy, there are plans, in the future we will migrate the phone uh, and as you've said earlier, the desktop to um, be built on Snappy and Snappy has plans for deduplication. So in the event that you have a hundred apps installed and they all need Python 3, they, they may all they may well all ship Python 3 binaries, but there will be deduplication, so you're not actually ending up with 100 copies of the Python binary 
on your machine at the same time. Okay. That's I didn't know that. Cool. No, I, I only knew that because I talked to them about it last week, uh, exactly seven days ago right now. Um, but that, that sound, you know, sounds really interesting and cool, especially on a mobile device or IoT uh, device where storage is uh, is limited. It's not so much of an issue on a desktop, but still, you know, with SSDs, you you can get a bit precious about your space, and uh, having deduplication as part of snaps uh, is um, a welcome addition. Um, looking for more question. Uh, so, going solo has a question asking, why doesn't Ubuntu come with a typing tutor for noobs? Hmm. There probably is one in the archive. I oh, would there's imagine. lots of them in the archives. I used one from um, the KDE project that uh, my kids used to practice their typing. That's really nice. So there are the there is plenty of them out there to choose from. It doesn't make sense to have that as a default installed app, though. Right. It, uh, funny, my son came home from school just now before we start recording and said to me, uh, "Daddy, have we got uh, have we got Word on our computers?" And I, and I was like, "Why?" Uh, and he said, oh, I just want to do some typing. And I said, well, we've got LibreOffice, which is the same thing. So he's now sat in the kitchen doing this with the LibreOffice. Uh, yeah, so that's the easiest typing tutor is, yeah, open LibreOffice and get them started. Yeah, it's called, I think it's called like K-Typing Tutor or something like that. And it starts them off with just simple repetitive keystrokes and builds them up into, you know, words and sentences that, that teach them, you know, touch typing. And it'll even track their progress and speed so that you can go back and look at it. So it's really nice if you're interested in uh, teaching somebody touch type. Awesome. Um, so a question. This is probably going to be a good question for Michael uh, Zanetti uh, from Le Fromage. says, is it possible to implement wobbly windows in Unity 8? Um, so right now, we do not have a an effect API, and we don't have an intermediate uh, plan to do that in the near future. But I've been talking with Jerry about this, and he, he has some ideas. So we haven't given up on the API, uh, on, on the idea to provide some window effect API or something to provide this. Um, however, no concrete plans right now. So maybe you can explain why why that's different from you know another desktop. So on on um, Unity Seven, which is a Compiz plugin implemented mostly as a Compiz plugin, mm. or with KDE that uses KWin, you know there are like tick boxes and buttons that I can make the desktop do wacky effects. What what's the infrastructure of Unity Eight, and why why is it not that I can just press that same button and get that same effect in Unity Eight? Well, because Unity 8 is an entirely new desktop, and one would need to create that framework to allow loading different effect plugins and everything. Right. Um, one thing also that differs is that this whole window management stuff, or like transforming windows and everything, is written in QML in Unity 8. So what we're trying, what we were thinking of, is to allow some way to or to write the code in a, in a way that all the effects stay, or the description of an effect stays in its own QML file, so that we eventually could just replace those QML files. And if that works, then we could think about a way to have an application that just installs new of those QML files, and then tells the system to load which one in which, in which circumstances. Right. Yeah, so we have ideas floating around, but again, no near-term plan right now to make it happen. It seems like the kind of thing that um, you know enthusiasts like to do. You know, they're the kind that you know you often see. There are there are communities online where people post screenshots of you know their tricked-out desktop or you know their latest conky configuration with you know all kinds of dials and things on the screen and you know wacky effects and. I often see in YouTube videos, you know, people minimizing a window and it exploding, or you know, flames, or you know, ninjas running off the screen and cutting the windows up, or you know, all kinds of wacky stuff. And it's that those kind of things that you know maybe we miss out on for good or bad. I don't know. Yeah, they're not very productive, but yeah. I know a lot of people who had no interest in Linux desktop until they saw a spinning cube with fish inside. All right. 
I, I agree, but there are some good ones too, like really headphones, which I've been using. Um, yeah, also for like developing. But yeah, our focus is committed to create a solid, stable desktop before we focus on all those links and gimmicks. Cool. Thank you. Um, uh, so, a uh, next question I think is from Dragon77. Once the whole mobile Internet of Things story becomes stable, uh, and then in brackets, in, I guess, 1604, what will be the next big thing? Crikey. Uh, or will you revert to making lots of medium-sized features for a while instead? Which is also good. Ooh. That's a good question. Yeah, so I wouldn't expect things on the mobile and IoT side to become boring in 1604. Uh, I think we've got... Uh, a couple of years at least of excitement around this uh, before we start looking for something new to entertain us. You don't think that 1604 is the point at which we all sit and put our feet up on the desk and say, that's it, bug number <laughs> one closed, we fixed everything? Yeah, probably not. No. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree with you. You know, 1604 seems like you know, every LTS is a milestone, you know, to to aim for, but then there's all those things you save up that you don't implement in the LTS to make sure the LTS is as stable as possible, which yeah. makes the, the one after LTS just as exciting because there's all the stuff yeah. that you didn't do yeah, previously. Yeah. So we already know that there's going to be work still to do on migrating everything to Snappy going even past 1604. Okay. Um, so the next question uh, from Going Solo: Will Snappy packages feel like the same installation method as .exe installs on Windows, or will it just go through the software center as a default, like dev packages? I.e., is the .exe new methodology oh, the whole reason for Snappy packs on the desktop, or am I missing something? No. So it should be just as easy to install as a dev package in the archive, where you say, "Go out to this remote place, grab a package, put it in my system." Don't show me a dozen dialogues and make me hit OK over and over and over again. Um, and it, it'll be like on the phone, too, where you don't even have to ask for permissions at install time. That all happens uh, when the app itself needs them. They are a little bit more like traditional Windows apps in that they are going to contain all their own dependencies. So app developers don't have to worry about what's on the system or the system changing out from underneath them. So it's going to give you the best of both worlds, really. OK. Um, next question is from Chloe Wolfie Girl. Uh, what does Vulcan from Valve stroke Steam mean for Ubuntu and Ubuntu on phones? Vulcan being what? Vulcan is like a new next gen OpenGL uh, thing. So the Vulcan group. Is, um, is a group of companies who work together on open APIs for graphics uh, graphics cards. So it's people like um, NVIDIA and people uh, who make silicon, people who make games, operating system vendors, and that kind of thing. Uh, and Canonical is a member of the Kronos group uh, who came up with Vulcan. Um, so it means that we're in a, in a good position to, to benefit from the, the sort of latest and greatest in um, API developments on graphics cards. So what does it mean for, what was the question, what does it mean for Ubuntu? Ubuntu on phones. Um, Ubuntu on phones, yeah. So, yeah, if, um, if, if a piece of silicon has all this implemented, at the point at which it's um, stable and uh, you know, an agreed standard, then, uh, then we will work just fine on it, if, if not better than we already do. Interesting. OK. Um, OK. Next question. Uh, this might not be answerable by any of us. Uh, it's from Cardia. Why did you choose this logo for the new Ubuntu? I assume they mean the uh, the monkey face that we have. The vervet face. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, well, so we've had we, every release. We have this uh, tradition of. Um, having new artwork for the CDs that you might buy from the store, uh, for T-shirts you might buy, and for uh, refreshing the website and uh, 
and the online, uh, not the online, the um, the step-by-step -step guide that you get in the installer. Um, and they they usually have the branding of the of the animal uh, that the the release is themed on. Um, and actually, today that was the first time I'd seen that vervet monkey thing. Yeah, me too. Uh, and me. it's it's similar to the previous. Uh, what was the previous one? Uh, unicorn. Perfect, the unicorn. Right. Uh, but the unicorn was mostly a Suru origami folded. Yeah, that's the thing. Sorry. What about the uh, Japanese? Go ahead, Michael. Sorry, I meant the other one was the trusty tar, which looked similar to. Ah, yes, it was. It was the tar that looked similar to this. Yes, cool. So yeah, we have a long history of having like. Interesting, iconic animals. Uh, yeah, it, it's part of the fun of Ubuntu. We're not all serious. Yes, yeah. because Mark is 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 defending Snappy uh, up up to the uh, up. and so it's not no no time to find an animal for the W. <laughs> I'm sh I'm sure we'll get a W name soon. Yeah, usually uh, to the to the last minute or later. So next question. Gordy Warthog. I think that's got a nice ring to it. <laughs> so moving on. Um, uh, someone's asking why they can't see my cat. Uh, it's because it's not here. Um, uh, so Chloe asks again, what feature are you looking forward to on the phone, which people might not know about? Oh, let's throw that one on Michael Zanetti. Uh, what are you most looking forward to on the phone that people might not know a lot about? Hmm. I'm not really sure what to answer right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know. Depends on what people know about, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, okay, I'll throw one that's really easy at you. Uh, your, um, there's an app that you've created which is allows people to put um, more hackish apps on their device that wouldn't be allowed in the store, right? Right, yeah. So uh, I was uh, playing with this app with, uh, with Michael yesterday at the desktop screen. So there's, uh, what's, it's open, what's it called? Tell us about it. Um, yeah, it's open store. It's basically an idea to, uh, yeah, to allow People who want to play more with their devices beyond of what the like of what the store currently offers, um, yeah. Kind of. Well, it lets you install unconfined apps. Yeah, the exactly. store gives you all kinds of security guarantees. Um, his store does not, so you get to, to play a little fast and loose with things. Uh, I used it. I installed this uh, Ubuntu tweak. Yeah. Yeah. That. So, if I you tap on that, that, you can't. No. Well, it's got an option where I can just click on it, and now I've got uh -huh. Windows on my phone, and then I click it again and it's back to regular phone mode, which is really neat and uh, requires access to permissions that you don't get when you're confined. So that wouldn't be allowed in the normal store. So that that um, that app that does tweaks to the to the phone there yeah there's there's various things that potentially people could fiddle with that are you know buried in settings somewhere that are not exposed in the UI you know we, we have no intention of exposing those in the UI um, and perhaps this is a way that people could deliver those kind of tweaks it, it reminds me of like the Windows tweak tool that allowed you to have you know um, um, a sloppy focus on the mouse and uh, you know window snapping way back in you know, Windows 2000 days that that kind of like fiddling with little buttons and, and switches that you you might not it might not be super secure for you to do it um, it's a bit like all the desktop faces again like if you like playing around that's the right thing for you but keep in mind you can break your device with it right yeah I mean like with the window mode I'm sure it's possible to like you know Bring up a window and then move it off the screen or something, and you can't you can't switch back or something like that. Yeah, actually, I think that's uh, that's a real bug we have currently. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, really? Oh, I was just guessing. I didn't, I didn't realize I'd uncovered a secret one. Yeah, uh, and some of those some of those things in the tweak tool are also really just meant to be a bit of a preview because eventually you're probably going to have the windowed mode on the phone anyways, but it's not finished yet. And, and um, the phone, as 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 a company, we cannot ship those unstable things in the final product yet. But then, yeah, with this tweak tool, you might be able to enable some some of those right now and have a look at it and where it will be in the future. So on that subject, are there any um, interesting things that you would like to see done with the Tweet tool or interesting things, interesting apps that would probably be unconfined that you'd like to see in your store that maybe later we would see in, in the real store? Um, yeah, it's, what I, my main intention with the store was basically to give people a playground. So I, I didn't even think about too many things that I would do with it, but I wanted to get the whole discussion started. I wanted to get some people starting to hack on the, on the phone, come up with cool things they cannot really do otherwise yet. Um, and out of that, we might see ideas which we really like, and we might pull into the main phone at some point. Right. So things like you've, you've got one in there for doing tethering, in the tweet tool, there's a button you can press to, to tether. There could be like buttons in there for VPN connectivity, or you know, create an encrypted file, or other like privacy-related things that people might be keen on. That you know, we just yet don't yet do, but could do in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Hope it's cat here. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we've got a bunch more questions. Um, I'm going to skip the ones related to my cat. Uh, uh, going Solo's asking, uh, what does the desktop guy with Michael Hall, that would be Will, uh, think of... Well, this is Pat Will Cook, for everybody who doesn't know him. <laughs> think of Patreon as a funding model for Ubuntu Mate. I'm not sure why it's being directed at you, uh, Will, but... Uh, I, evidently, um, they don't want my opinion on it, so fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, apparently I can explain this. I'm not sure why. I think more power to them. I think um, open source projects uh, need financial support. They, people work on these things in the evenings and weekends for well, they they set out to do it for fun. They don't get paid to do it. But uh, if you if you want to keep it going as a full time venture, then you need money to do that. Uh, your job or you know do it full time. So you need to to raise money. So I think um, things like uh, Kickstarter and Patreon. Uh, and things like that are a, are a good idea for people to, to get support for their projects. Yeah, I think the specific question about Ubuntu Mate is because uh, there's a Patreon for donations to the Ubuntu Mate uh, remix, which is due to become a, an, a, an official flavor in, like, I don't know, 48 hours when 1504 releases. Um, and they use that money for not just for, you know, funding the hosting of servers and stuff, but also... Uh, they use it for donating to other projects, and um, I think uh, this weekend Martin, who works on Ubuntu Mate, has bought a whole bunch of um, SD cards and Raspberry Pi type stuff to demonstrate Ubuntu on Raspberry Pis at a local Raspberry Pi jam. So yeah, that seems like a valuable way to spend money, I think. Yeah, I like that because it's not just you know money for himself, but this is money that's actually going to let him do things that cost money, so that it doesn't have to come out of his own pocket. Exactly. That's cool. Uh, Le Fromage says, "Is SDL two part of the Ubuntu SDK? So if I want to code an SDL game, where do I start?" Anyone know the answer? No, it's not part of the SDK, but SDL does work on Mir. So I don't know exactly what the details are to start writing a game using it and click package it for the phone, but technically it should be possible. I think uh, someone in our community has, uh, on GitHub, put a template for creating SDL2 games uh, uh, as a you know, proof of concept that people could take and then... Um, you know, build upon uh, and and deploy as a quick package on the phone. I don't know how how whether that's been updated recently or whether it's been tested on recent images, but I know 
there was work to do that. So I know people are working on like making uh, statically compiled binaries that ha that include libsdl2 in their uh, in their click package. So look out for those in the store soon, I guess. Uh, next question. Uh, oh, this is a good one, Will. This is for you. Uh, from Le Fromage. What will happen to Unity 7 or X11 after 1604? Uh, very little. It will continue to be there in the archive. Um, once Unity 8 is the, is the primary focus of development, then it's fair to say that Unity 7 will not be the primary focus anymore. Um, I, how much? Uh, how many people are there looking after it? I can't say, uh, but it's, uh, it's we're not going to delete the code or anything. It's still going to be there in the archive. Um, Xorg will still be there in the archive. Um, yeah, these things will continue to exist. And I guess they'll continue to exist until it becomes onerous to maintain them, uh, in the same way that Unity 2D uh, was in the archive, and then after a few releases. You know, it seemed uh, too onerous to maintain the thing, so it was eventually dropped. I would imagine at some point in the future, uh, it may go away or take on uh, new owners will take it on. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then um, once Unity Eight is at uh, feature parity with Unity Seven, then yeah, the, the requirements to to maintain that from our side just kind of go away. We don't have to we don't have to maintain the old one because everyone will be using the new one because it will be at least as good and almost certainly better. And that that's you know realistically that's some time off given that we've recently had an LTS. So 1404 was an LTS and that's got five years uh, of support. So my simple maths tells me it's not going away for a few years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, moving on. Um, oh, this is a good one from Nightmare. Do you think the Ubuntu phone could survive a DEF CON conference without being hacked? Is there anything that can survive a DEF CON <laughs> conference without being hacked? I think the Ubuntu phone would be used to <laughs> others. <laughs> Sorry, Michael, go on. Zanetti, sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, right. Now I just made a joke. I said probably the Ubuntu phone will be used to hack the others. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. I I, uh, I recently was at a conference and I handed the phone to a random individual who I know is uh, keen on doing that kind of stuff and uh, asked him to try and uh, break into my phone. And he tried via various means, you know, with the USB cable and... Uh, tried to get in over SSH and tried to break the lock screen and you know in my experience of one person attacking my phone it survived pretty well uh, but I didn't let him walk away with it so uh, I don't know how yeah. long it would survive but yeah I would but, imagine it would be as susceptible as any Pond, they're going to go after the hardware radios and stuff too so it, it may not even be something that we could have prevented mm -hmm. yeah, it's an interesting question though and I, I actually quite like the idea of people trying to hack the phone. I, I want to see more people, you know, probing at it, poking at it, making sure that our security model is is sane and that, you know, we're doing the best we can to protect our users' data. Yeah, I'm sure sooner or later we're going to be on a, a DEF CON or a, a hacking competition or something. <laughs> we, I I'm, I'm not sure that's a goal we're aspiring for. <laughs> You know. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, Kari asks, "What makes Ubuntu on phones different from other operating systems?" Quite a bit. Uh, we've got all of the power of what we've been building for the desktop backing it up. Uh, you've got all your standard tools and stuff on there. Very soon, you know, the phone and the desktop are going to converge together, and you're just going to have one image and one set of software that does everything. And I know there are others out there that are going towards it. Microsoft is really making a strong push uh, in the same direction. So we're not going to be alone for long, but uh, I think we're ahead of the curve for most of them on that. We're also pretty unique in the permission system, which is something that a lot of people, once they see it and understand the importance of it, it really, it's like a light bulb going off. Like, oh, that's of course the right way to do it. I don't know why Android does it this way. Uh, the fact that you know you can install any app without giving it any permissions 
and then only say yes or no when it specifically wants yes, something. Right. right. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, nothing much has a question. Do click packages have the extension dot click, or is it like dot elf, as in it doesn't need an extension, and if it's the latter, will click packages be easily available for other distros? Mm. So yes, they have a dot click file extension. They're just um, an archive file, just like dev files are. In fact, I think at the, the format level, they're the same as dev files. Um, so they're not like Elf. They're not a, a single binary file. They're just a package. Mm -hmm. uh, will they be easily available to other distros? That's going to depend on the other distros. There's nothing in Click, the format, or the tools that are uh, that requires Ubuntu. So if somebody else wanted to support Clicks, they could do that. It just requires work in the distro to make that happen. <coughs> Okay. Uh, Chloe asks, will, ah, this is probably one for Zanetti, uh, will scopes be able to do more in the future? Actually, maybe, maybe not. Uh, would I be able to comment on someone's photo on the Instagram scope uh, or see more than 10 items at once or maybe even pay for them in the Amazon scope and so on? So asking really if so, scopes are going to become richer. Yes, and in fact, some of that actually already works. You can buy apps already uh, through the app scope. So that already is possible. You can leave comments and reviews on apps already in the app scope. Whether all of that's exposed in the API right now, I don't know. Uh, but it's certainly possible within the framework of scopes. And I know there's uh, plans already to extend them in other ways. For example, being able to play uh, video previews within a scope like you can with audio right now is something that's being planned already. And uh, Zanetti, you were saying there's improvements to scopes. I, I wanted to come back to you on this, actually. You said there's uh, improvements to the way uh, scopes are being, I don't know, how you, how you switch scopes, that kind of stuff. Is that something that's coming soon? Yeah, that's what well, I don't know exactly the, the detailed roadmap in the timeline-wise yet, but, yeah, that's one thing we're working on. Um, to make it easier how you access different scopes, to be able to reach them quicker. Um, they'll probably be in the right edge, so you can switch to different scopes using the right edge. Uh, yeah, so we do quite a, a lot, we have quite a lot of efforts right now going on in the Unity team to uh, make scopes more powerful, make them better accessible, and improve them overall. Basically. And does that come from, like, user testing feedback from, you know, people actually playing with the phone, realizing, you know, things are not as easy as they could be or, you know, we could make this better. Yeah, exactly. Like, ever since we started with the scopes, it's always been a constant um, try and get user feedback and improve upon and that. And, yeah, we're just about to start the next iteration uh, of building in the, all, all the feedback we got with the current edition. Yeah. So someone who went out you know, this month or last month and bought a retail BQ phone or, you know, when they when they come, the, the new Meizu phone and then whatever other phones are coming after that, can they expect to get an over-the-air update at some point in the future that's going to implement these things? So they'll, the, you know, the, for them, the user interface will be improved with an overnight update or something like that. Yeah, uh, definitely. That's our plan to support... Uh to ship updates of, of the regular Ubuntu to the devices we've already sold. Um, again, I'm, I don't know exact time, timelines and everything, but yeah, as far as our development team goes, the instructions are clear. Make it, make it work with the, yeah, with the current base and then ship it as an update, yeah. Awesome. Mike, did you have uh, something you wanted to mention there? No, not okay. on that one. Okay. Uh, I think we're running out of questions. Uh, oh, one last question. Uh, if you have any more questions, get them in now because we're running low on time. Uh, this one's from Dragon77. Are we going to have a global app competition anytime? Yes. Uh, us and the community team who have run the previous app developer contest have been uh, contemplating what to do for our next one. Um, to try and highlight some of the new things that are coming on. So yes, we do plan on doing something like that in the future. Maybe we should do a um, an online summit session about that, Alan. 
That's an excellent idea, actually. Yes, I'll uh, I'll create an online summit session, and we can think about the best type of contest, and you know what to do in terms of prizes and uh, setting you know goals and expectations and all that kind of stuff and timelines. Great idea. I'll do that after this call. Um, you've missed a question there. If uh, oh. you put web browser is using WebKit. Yes. Uh, we did miss No. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> so the browser is using the new Blink engine, which is a fork of WebKit. Um, that's what Upstream Cute has moved to also. Excellent. Uh, so there's another question come from Nothing Much that says, uh, can we get the Meizu Ubuntu phone yet? No, you cannot yet, but you will be able to sometime soon. I just can't tell you when. <laughs> I don't think but any of us can tell you when. I just can't tell you when. I don't think any of us know. Uh, but the the good thing is uh, it's in progress, and um, you could let ne Meizu know that you're interested, and maybe they'll tell you when. I don't know. But actually, it's somewhat out of our control. The same. I mean, this is the same answer we be. You know, we were giving uh, two months ago when people were asking, "When can I buy the BQ phone?" Uh, the answer is, you know, we don't control that. That's it's BQ who sell the device. We provide the software. Uh, we work very closely with them, uh, but we don't control when the hardware ships. That's up to them, um, and how they sell it and where they sell it is is up to them because it's it, it, it's their hardware. But that is all still moving along. Nothing's changed. There's nothing blocking it. It's just a matter of finishing off the last bits and getting it out the door. All right, we have one more from Chloe, and that one should probably be the last one. OK. Uh, what apps would you like to see on Ubuntu phone? What do you miss from iOS or Android? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, let's go to Zanetti first for that one. <laughs> Um, I guess by now I've written everything I knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to do it. <laughs> um, no, actually, I've I've never used WhatsApp or something, so I really don't miss them. Oh, I do, I do miss Jabber actually, XMPP support. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, generic kind of chat client for, you know, talking yeah. to people on. But are you saying specifically Java or XMPP? For me, for me, specifically Java. And ideally, I'd like to have it integrated into the existing messages thing. That would be my dream. Uh, apart from that, I'm quite set by now, to be honest. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, our time over here is up. We're going to have to vacate our room. So uh, it was fun to be on. Thank you, everyone, for the questions. I know we got a lot of them in at the last minute. You should get them in earlier next time. Uh, Alan will tell you when next time is. OK, see you later, guys. Uh, yeah, next time is, well, a week from now. So that will be the 28th of April, same time, same place, ubuntuonair.com. Uh, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Will. Thank you, Michael Zanetti. See you next time. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. -bye. Yes, bye.